Good afternoon. I wanted to give you a tour of the front yard for the last time this year, or at least I'll, I might give you another tour of the tobacco, seeing it's still blooming. But uh, I'll give you a shot of the tomatoes. Of they're done with. They're brown and wilting, and I'm just about to dig them up. So as you can see. That's it for the season, for the tomatoes at least. I just started digging the small one up and that had a decent root system already from where I just transplanted it a couple months ago. And there's just, that tomato has already been frozen a few times. This tomato is done with that will go into the flow through bin so that's the end of the season for the tomatoes I'll dig these up and put them all in to the, at least the flow through bin in the living room to compost in there so off the small plant the small tomato plant you can see it had a nice decent root system for the most part I thought it did so that's quite a bit of roots just for a couple months growth I wanted to show you the worms that are living underneath this I didn't think there were that many this guy's been living probably a few months I found him in my house cruising around he's huge who knows how much more he's underneath there each time I pull up there's an isopod right there he's happy there's all sorts of worms as I'm looking around underneath this each piece of paper I'm pulling up there's more worms and this is just in a bucket these guys are providing compost to the tomato plant plus aerating the soil so they're moving around getting oxygen to the roots and where the coffee grounds were there are quite a few so I'll winterize this, meaning I'll make more cardboard available, newspaper, and more food for them to survive out here in the winter. They'll dive down where it's not going to be freezing and survive. Hopefully, that's my plan, and it should work. But yeah, there's quite a few worms right where the coffee grounds were and this is the root system off the big tomato plant quite a few roots quite a few roots that broke off into the soil of the pot you could hear this thing snap like crazy when I pulled it up and I found two worms living inside the root system so that, that tells me there's a benefit if they're right at the root system itself inside living there's stuff for them to eat <clears throat> and beneficial for the plant itself so I'll give you a, a view of the front yard while well, I still have a minutes a few minutes before the live Wednesday night night chat pumpkins the vines are completely gone nothing on the vines I mean for at least being alive the pumpkins are already shrinking this tobacco here still has a couple blooms on it big old seed head on this down here 
not much yellow on this one. The dandelion is done for this year, but it produced lots of multiple heads on it. So that should be a good intake or uptake of nitrogen to the top of the surface. The rose bush still keeps growing. I'm amazed at the growth of this year. All this green wasn't here this year. This tobacco plant's pretty much done. You can see as it dies off, changes to yellow, brown, and that's it. That's and then the seed pods dry up. So this one isn't going to do anything because of the cold temperatures we've been having. And over here, both of these pretty much are done with. I'm impressed with the growth, being the first year of growing them. Quite a few seed pods. We'll harvest this sometime. I'm going to keep all these separate and then give them out to people in the neighborhood or people who want to grow them next year. Few, few flowers still lingering. So that's a tour of the front yard. So this morning there was a head-on collision in Chino Valley. Uh, two vehicles, five patients, uh, two uh, 901 H's on, at the scene uh, which means deceased and two of them were flown out one got transported by ambulance and later today I read that uh, one of the kids passed away at the hospital and were in Phoenix where they were flown out so I just happened to be awake at that time listening to that it was pretty good you know, for traffic wise not for the people, of course, but um, quite a bit of air-to-air -air traffic between uh, Native 4 and Angel 4 that came in out of uh, Verde. Uh, they kept on talking back and forth about the location, which sometimes they do on uh, a major accident like that on 123.025 so the new scanner feed which I probably haven't told anybody about um, a friend of mine put up a new scanner feed on Broadcastify which used to be radio reference for Yavapai County so we were listening to his feed and you know at the same time listening to my scanners so that's just an extra uh, device to listen to for me um, to see what he's got programmed in and what else we can program in. Uh, you know, there's always things to add, but you don't want to overcrowd an online feed like that. You want to keep base the basics to a minimum and not crowd all the different frequencies that you can put in and listen to if you do that then you miss out on some of the calls or some of the transmissions between agencies so if you're into listening to online scanner feeds you might check out the Yavapai County one that's up here and he's also put one in Phoenix for DPS for three or four districts 
I, I saw it listed online, but I haven't really checked it out yet. So that's the end of today's vlog, and thanks for watching. Um, Renee, before I forget, I'll make a separate vlog up to answer your question about my worms. So that will be a separate vlog all of its own. So we'll see you guys tomorrow.